I don't know where my two speakers went, so <laughs> they're in the hall. I should probably remind them that it's time to start. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, well, thank you for coming back to the Legal and Policy Issues Dev Room. Um, for uh, those of you that uh, didn't have too much beer last night, and uh, we're really excited to start off um, uh, talking today about IP risks with Young Shin and Sumi. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, the scope of this. Uh, the oh wait. Okay. Um, uh, the topic of this talk is IP risk for open source uh, developers. And uh, yesterday, I went to a very interesting keynote of um, James Turnbull on software archaeology for beginners. And I really enjoyed, I don't know if anyone else was there, but I really enjoyed the, the talk. Um, and I learned a lot, although I don't think I understood everything. But uh, there were two minor things that disturbed me like a little bit. The first thing, but I discussed it with him. so. <laughs> He knows. Um, uh, and uh, the first thing was, uh, it, it, one of his messages was that you always have to write, uh, to, to ask the, say, the right question at the right time. And as an example of how it should not be, he gave the example of uh, don't ask a developer what his favorite contract is. I think that that's a, a bit unfortunate because I think that the developers should be aware of contracts because it's law is inevitable and you need to know where you're working with on a daily basis. Um, the second thing that was like a little <laughs> missing from my point of view was in his step-by-step -step, uh, process of what you should do when you join an open source project, he didn't mention uh, the compliance uh, check, or the licensing compliance check. And I asked him afterwards and he said that he just just uh, the people in a good project. So, but we will talk about this today because uh, we think there are some issues. Um, so what we do want to share with you today is uh, some thoughts on how to protect yourself against IP infringements by others, or we w and we will also talk a little bit about how to protect yourself. Um, before um, we really start the presentation, uh, I just want to give you the message that if you are involved in an open source project, there is still uh, copyrights hanging there, like uh, because copyleft is, is only like an exception for your copyright. So you really need to consider copyright and you really need to know what the risks are. Um, yeah, but first, really before we get to the protection of um, the protection mechanisms for you, we will have Sumi talking about Copyright, basically, no? Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, we, we will, I will explain the problem shortly. You have an open source project X, and developer 1, he, um, though he is acting in good faith, he adds an infringing contribution to the developer's chain. Um, the piece of code that he uses infringes the IP rights of a third party who is not directly involved in the project and didn't give permission to use this code. Now, every subsequent develop developer will be, can be held liable for this infringement, even when, when they are not aware of the fact that his contribution is infringing. In general, creating a computer program, um, even op open source, completely unaware of the existence of any IP rights of a third party. It can be used as a defense to willful uh, IP infringement, but it's not a um, defense to IP infringement in general. Because it is common for open source projects that they are developed by a community rather than uh, one person or one organization, these problems occur in real life. In case of a big project, when you have thousands of uh, developers, it's not reasonable to expect that every developer will check if there are infringements in the code by other uh, developers. But in smaller projects, um, these expectations might be different. You can use version management systems to see which developer made which contribution to the project. <coughs> the risk of IP infringements 
Um, it is not a specific problem to open source projects, but of course the risk is greater because open source allows you to distribute and modify the software uh, freely. The infringement um, will carry through uh, subsequent versions of the program and further development of the uh, software. So a small and quick remark is that everything we say today is uh, seen from a Belgian point of view. Of course, when you have an international project, it's possible that there is another law uh, applicable. So um, this can also have uh, influence on the outcome of the result of your claim. So the problem consists of two elements. When do you have an IP risk and how can you protect yourself? So first I will explain about when you will have an infringement. <coughs> In, uh, I will explain you which kind of intellectual property rights should be taken into account when you are dealing with open source projects. Um, the most important are, <coughs> are copyright and patent law. First I will tell you something about copyright and how you can know if the source code of someone else is protected by copyright. So in Belgium, in general, computer programs are protected by copyright uh, because there's an assimilation with literary works with the Berne Convention. So it's not exactly the same as general copyright, but you can see it is as a kind of modified version of copyright for software. Because of the general principle that copyright doesn't protect the underlying idea of your program, but only the original expression, uh, you are allowed to copy the functionality of a computer program, provided that you do not copy the source code, but you rewrite it to your own original code. And the mere fact that software is developed in an open source context does not mean that there is an exemption on this general principle that, cop that copyright um, plays a role. In Belgium, we don't have a definition of what a computer program exactly is, but for instance, the UK does, so it is possible that different elements of your program are protected in different countries. <coughs> um, the European Court of Justice did um, indicate that your object code, source code, and your preparatory design will be, can possibly be considered as an expression of your um, computer program. What matters is that your uh, expression enables the reproduction of your computer program and it enables the computer to perform its task. So, what are the criteria for copyright protection? Um, you need originality and Article 1 of the European Software Directive says that the computer program shall be protected in the sense that it is the author's own intellectual creation, um, in the sense that he made creative choices that are an expression of his um, own personality. Uh, so you cannot apply any other criteria for copyright protection. There will be given protection to the expression in any form of your uh, computer program, provided that the nature uh, is such as that the computer program can result from it in a later stage. As a consequence, you will not get protection for your functionality of your program, the programming language, and the format of data files, data files and um, the graphic user interface. Um, nevertheless, a graphic user interface can be protected by general copyright if it fulfills the criteria of um, originality. Um, this also applies to the programming language. It can also be protected if it is an original expression. So are there any formalities to obtain copyright? There are none. The mere act of creating your computer program is sufficient to obtain copyright protection. It's also not necessary that your software is finished, so you will be able to get protection for every stage of your computer program. Um, and who is the author? In principle, it is the creator. You have some um, assumptions for, in the case of um, employees or, um, or when it's in an... Um, yeah, we, when you are working for someone else. So you have various works when copyright. Um, in the context of open source projects, you could say that you are uh, that you have a maze of derivative works. So when you have your first original work, 
Um, in an open source project, a developer will base himself on the, pro on the contributions of the previous developers. <laughs> so he will make a derivative work because he will use essential elements of, his, of the first original creation. Um, however, you can't get protection for your derivative work if it um, fulfills the criterion of originality itself. So you will have an independent and fully functioning protection for your derivative work, but you will need authorization from the previous developer to use his uh, piece of code. Uh, a lot of open source uh, licenses, they will have a provision on how it works, derivative uh, rights. The set of copyrights, they cover patrimonial rights or economic rights and moral rights. Moral, moral rights, they want to safeguard the link with the author whereas economic rights are more, um, you can use them to exploit your um, work. In case of the joint authorship, which is typically for open source projects, those rights will belong equally to all the authors unless, unless you have agreed otherwise. Now, um, who is a co-author? In order to be considered as a co-author, um, it's, um, you it's, necess it's not necessarily that all the developers worked on it on the same time, which is of course uh, not the case when you have an open source project. It's also not uh, necessary that your contribution was equally important, uh, but it is required that your contribution fulfills the criteria of originality, or that your contribution was necessary in order to get the computer program the way it is now. So this means that someone who only proposed an idea or made something on instructions of someone else, he will not be considered as a co-author. An exception of copyright protection is given by the case when the rights of the author are limited by a private agreement or a license. Uh, especially in the case when open source is um, available, there are licenses that might limit the use of your code. It's a very difficult and complicated matter and the clauses are often rather unclear, uh, especially if you have uh, individual programmers who wrote the provisions. Um, there are also, there's also disagreement about the interpretation of open source licenses, but in any case, it's very important that you always read your open source uh, agreement and know what's in it, so that you won't be surprised at the end. There are many types of open source licenses, um, we will not talk about this in detail, but just leave it at the idea that you have a lot of them. Now, uh, when will you have an infringement of copyright? You have two types of infringements. Uh, either your code is an unlawful use of the code, or you have an infringement of your license terms. Um, a license that will not be honored, for example, when you were required to apply a notice and you didn't do this. Um, the question, if the developer was aw aware of the fact that he was infringing someone else's code, um, it could play a part, it could play a role in copyright. Because of the fact that copyright doesn't require any formality um, and comes into existence um, following the mere creation of it, um, it's of course not easy to know if something is protected by copyright. Um, however, the Copyright Act, it does not uh, require that the infringer has knowledge of the infringement or the copyright, so it is not uh, an exception to copyright. Another IP infringement might follow from a breach of patent law. Although computed programs are excluded from copyright, from uh, patent protection as such, um, the European Patent Office does grant such software patents <coughs> if they are part of a new and um, non-obvious technical solution for a technical problem. Moreover, in many other countries, software patents are accepted. In a way, patents allow you to protect the underlying idea of your computer program, which is something that copyright doesn't. Now, since most of the patent claims do not include the source code, it is impossible to do technical searches based on the available patent data and um, open source code. In practice, it may be 
possible just to avoid well-known infringing patents and to look at the patents of your direct competitors. Um, so it's not easy to know if your code is an infringement of a patent, um, but you should know that a patent is a territorial right. This means that its uh, scope of protection is limited to the country under which it was granted. So if I have obtained a patent for Belgium, I cannot exercise my rights in France, for instance. Since getting patent protection all over the world is very costly, there are only very few companies who can do this. Um, the biggest risk in our discussed problem is this when developer one, when he would contribute code in a way that uh, is not allowed by the license or is an infringement of a patent protection. But you should also know that you can have a combination for protection of copyright and patent law because they will protect a different, uh, different subject matter. Uh, now, for this presentation, it won't make a big difference if you have a patent infringement or a copyright infringement. The main concern is that there was an infringement somewhere along in the developer's chain. Uh, you could ask, is it possible to um, exonerate the other open source developers when someone made an infringement? Now, the uh, starting point when you address the, the, the effect of an agreement on third parties is Article 1165 of the Belgian Civil Code. This, this article entails the relativity principle, which means that the effect of an um, agreement towards third parties will only be very limited. Uh, when you apply this principle to the open source agreement between the different developers who uh, <coughs> deliver a contrib contribution, this has as a consequence that provisions who um, are in exoneration, uh, which exonerate developers for the use of infringing materials, they cannot be successfully invoked against the third party, so the person whose rights were infringed. However, you can use such a in provision in, uh, against the developer who made the infringing contribution because it is only fair that if someone who was um, in good faith and innocent, innocent that he can reclaim the damages that he should pay from the infringing developer. So that was it about the uh, when is there a risk part. Yeah, and so I will now talk more on how to protect yourself. Um, well, don't raise your expectations too high because actually you can't do that much. Um, but I think that most of all, it's, it's uh, we have to make a distinction first between your own code and the code of others. Um, I mean, like when you uh, get into a project, when you join a project, um, there are some things you have to do uh, in well for your own code that is right in good faith. So, first of all. Uh, try to avoid duplication. If you don't need the code of someone else, start from zero and write it yourself. That's pretty easy. And then also keep records. So if you keep clean and clear records of, of all your actions, it will be easier for um, the next uh, contributors in, in the project to, to check your code and to understand what the legal obligations are that are, are connected to, to your code. Um, and then uh, about um, the code of others is, I call it here, uh, joining uh, in good, good faith. So then there are some preventive mechanisms and some remedial efforts. So about prevention is uh, you, yeah, well, first of all, only contribute uh, clean code yourself, again, if you, you also for when you join. And then be aware of the previous contributions. Uh, this means that you need to identify uh, all the pieces of the code and where they come from. You need to identify the uh, the person, the developer who wrote it, the licenses uh, that are that are burdened the code, and what the obligations and limitations are that follow from these licenses. Um, so therefore, you need to read the documentation, and that will be a lot of work. Um, if uh, well, yeah, you can have open source insurances. But due to the fact that they're quite expensive and they not, not cover everything, all the legal issues, they don't seem to become very popular. So what to do if you have uh, figured out that someone previous uh, 
has used infringing code? Well, first of all, you can try to modify the code, but yeah, that will be very time consuming and me consuming, but so I guess that's only a solution when you're in the ver very early stages of the project. And then secondly, you can negotiate uh, additional licenses because if uh, a previous person was the author of the code, he has the right to yeah, well, give another license with other obligations and other limitations. So I guess that we, our main conclusions are that there are no crystal clear conclusions for solutions. And um, a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, read the licenses and try to comply as, as good as you can, basically. Yeah, that was it. So <laughs> if someone has questions, like more concrete questions. Any questions? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Well, this is actually very convenient. I don't think I think I'll have the screen is already synced yet, so. Yes. I'm sure I'm getting lots of malware installed on my laptop when I put these in. All these free software developers in their free software. It's Sorry, we we had a full time. Oh, I am flash drive. Wow. Uh, well, come on, show up. Uh, yeah, I figured, I figured he wouldn't. He sounded less than I would. He needs more hours to sleep. Yeah, I know. It's like highly overrated. Did you go to the Gnome Beer? Yes, she of course she did. Yeah. I, 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 no? I, stopped, I stopped by to say hello, and then she was still there. She stayed like four hours later. I stayed really late. Oh it was my really God. Fun. And then, like, a, a small group of people, two, two different groups of people. I got a lightning storm. This is a USB 3 port. It's possible oh, okay. the flash drive doesn't like wow. USB 3. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, that's. Yeah, my, my bag is there. Yeah, thanks. Like a late dinner. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, sure. Um, Say it again. Are you uh, ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I think. If you want. I, I don't want to to no, no. I, I, I prefer to do. Yeah. Okay. Then I would be happy. Um, and I think that we this time, is a, a time yet. Or I, we haven't had very many repeat speakers, but I like this. It's a repeat uh, yeah. with Deborah's speaker, so. <laughs> No. But no, his, it will be it was new content. He was on a panel. It's like me. He's yeah. been on panels, but no, I, I have never spoken either. He's in the same situation I am in. Yeah, we should have we should have bugged Jerv to submit a talk. I'm sorry, I missed you. Or Martin, Martin, you could submit a talk. Yeah, why did Martin? Submit a talk? <laughs> you still have time. <laughs> you have my slot. Really? Did, you, did you manage to connect it up? Yeah, and Jeremy actually Jeremy. solved the problem. I talked to Jeremy for an hour last night about it, and he solved everything. Yeah, so it's all connected. So, so okay, I think we've got. Uh, yeah, so you have a time thing? Yeah. So it's 9.30 this week, we'll start, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think mine is more accurate than yours. I think it's but mine just syncs with NTP this morning. Yes. Well, then, <laughs> and so what's your point? <laughs> my point is mine is, is my only well, microseconds off. I got I microseconds seven, seven, off. That's well, several but it's, it's... Don't you know? It's synced, like, like an hour ago. Don't you know the, don't you know the Android bug about how American phones are, what is it, 30 seconds off? <laughs> but it's synced with, I have the NTP client installed. It's synced it's with NTP. It's got a bug. It's got a bug. It did 30 seconds in two hours? No, no, no. It's because of the off. There's like, it didn't take into account some offset thing. It's 30 seconds around. Even if you have the NTP Even if you have NTP. No. Yes. Ask Paul. He was here yesterday. He would know. I don't believe this. I believe if the NTP client's not installed. If you have an NTP client installed, you're telling me the NTP guys didn't... didn't this isn't an NTP thing. It's something about the... 
Goofy OS I'm already on the back. Oh, then maybe maybe Paul fixed it. So I take it all back. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. So I'm writing Paul's code. Wait a second. I'm writing Paul's code. I just realized what Paul you were talking about. The guy whose code I'm running, you said it's broken. No, no, no. I thought you were running. I thought you were running this. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot that you were running the, the real thing. Okay. I'm running the real thing. I don't run that Google crap. Okay, just checking. So um. So I work sure I'm about Alexos? Alexos. Uh, Alexos. Alexios. 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 Or Alexos. There's an I. You have to see the I. Say the I. Okay. I don't know if they pronounce the I's in Greek. Okay. Alexios. You have a problem with names, President. I have a really bad problem pronouncing names. Even U.S. ones. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm just a dumb American. I pronounce U.S. names wrong, too. I can sort of pronounce Smith, but <laughs> occasionally I've said Smythe, right? I mean, <laughs> it's because everybody pronounces my name wrong. That's it's, it's. I'm getting back at the world. I've been called Kun so many times. My name's Kun, but people say Kun all the time. For since I was a kid. Kuhn, yeah, people like that. That's actually close to it. It's a German name, yeah. And the umlaut was dropped at some point in the U.S., so it's actually Kuhn, but. Technically speaking, but with the only out the only out, it's yeah. mm. and without a yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 actually there are people there are people in the U.S. who are translated with transliterated with my name that's K U E H N E oh okay yeah you so find those that, that cuties in but they still say coon those people still say coon you kind of have the same name right they say it the way I do. <laughs> So uh, let's get, get started with, uh, since we have a couple of short talks, I want to make sure.